While I've been telling you for the last few weeks to review your mistakes, um, I had a really good match points tournament the other day and won with a 71%. And I chose to review my good boards and found this really educational. First of all, there are a lot of reasons you do, you get a good board in match points, and some of them have nothing to do with you. You may have thought that you were brilliant only to discover that your defenders were the only dummies who made a terrible play and gave you a good score. Uh, you may decide that you may, you may realize that you uh, bid a contract that made no sense at all and just happened to make and be the only one making it. So, so by reviewing them, I, I think I learned a little bit more about match points. I have so much to learn. And, uh, and it, w it was interesting. This first board is a good example. I, and I got 89%, um, along with uh, three other tables. So what went well? Well, we, first of all, we got to the right contract with three no trump. But so did 14 tables. Only two were not in three no trump. So what are my choices here? Do I have another choice? Sure, I could pass. Why would I pass? Well, um, right now I need north in three no trump. I need to score club tricks. And I have no guarantee whatsoever that there is an entry over there. And if for some reason I screw up and lose and don't have an entry or lose the entry by poor play, then I'll get a bad score. Um, so, and if that condition exists, if there's no entry over there, leaving this in three clubs with 20 points could result in a good score. In fact, it did. One table left it in three clubs, and because so many other people, so many other tables were not able to cash out their club tricks, they actually ended up with a 71%. So passing, right, with a, with a field that is not going to make ends up being okay. But that sort of feels like leaving it up to chance. So I don't know. I bid three no trump, as, as did almost everybody. So I feel like I got to the right contract, right? I want to be playing. I don't want to be the only one in three clubs. I want to be one of the uh, 14 people in, in three no trump. And then I want to do better than them, okay? So comes down and my fears are realized in that only the Queen of Hearts can provide an entry, right? Critical to having any chance on this is to unblock the Ace and King of Clubs before leading at the Queen of Hearts. And the King of Hearts must be in West for this to succeed. So right away, my three no trump is down to a 50% chance. Now, West starts with the seven of spades, which doesn't look bad. I have king, jack, ten. That's usually good for a stopper. Um, so I'm feeling pretty good. Um, I play the ten, and east goes up with the ace, and, um, and I'm, and I'm going to play low. What was the seven? Was it from length? Well, if you look at the rule of 11 that we talked about last week, then there were four cards higher than the seven out there, the ten, the ace, the king, and the jack. Which means West probably has the balance of the spades. Um, is it five or is it six, right? Well, there are a lot of little cards out. Um, here comes one of them, the six. And now I have a choice, um, a choice to make here. If I stick the jack in, I could be in a lot of trouble. Um, I, I see the king jack now as sort of being a a stopper. Also, the other thing that's out there is I don't know for sure that this is from a doubleton, even though it seems like West might have six. And uh, it might be interesting just to put West to the test. And that's what I did in the game. And he let him win it. And as it turns out, East only had two. He can't lead back through. Um, and he leads a heart instead, which is not the best situation for me, right? Because if this guy has the king, um, then he should let me win, or right? He should let me win. Or perhaps the smart thing is for me to play the ace. Whoops! Is to play the ace here because I need to unblock this. I still got the same situation, right? Because I can lead up to the queen. I have two hearts. This is the way to play it. 
Yeah, now the queen is established and I control the spade suit. He has to lead a diamond and this will be the last trick. This will take them both and play over here. And the, and the rest of the hand is good. So let's start this one by looking at um, the results. And you can see that um, there becomes a choice of, of whether to let them play in two spades, which you're able to set, or whether to go to three diamonds in competition. So you open a club, spade, two diamonds, two spades, let them play it, set them for 42%, right, getting 100, or take a chance on making three diamonds, which is 110. So the idea is like that 10 point difference, right? One way, if you can beat spades down one, that's a negative 100. If you can't, then you, and you bid three diamonds, then um, you can make 110, then you're good to go. And obviously as it shows here, you can actually make 130. Now look at the colors, right? If you were able to convince the robot that a penalty double was of two spades, because you believed you could set two, two spades, if you could actually get a penalty double in, you could score at negative 200 and get a clear top. But these are the choices that you have to make. So I wanted to preface it. Let's see if we can spot some of these as we go. Uh, this is kind of an area of match points that I need lots and lots of work on. We have six, seven, six, 13 points. Right? And uh, we start with club. Okay, and um, we're now in the decision seat. So we can let them play two spades. It would appear, remember our two diamonds here is a free bid, right? They, we have most of the points. Six, seven, and six, 13 plus maybe 11, and we take them out, that's 24 points. We're not gonna be able to play no trump. Um, he didn't seem interested, he bid, the, he bid diamonds in, and uh, instead of doubling, which he might have done if he had hearts and hearts and diamonds, um, so I don't think he, there's a heart fit. So it looks like it, it's it's diamonds is our fit, and we have to decide: do we have a defensive enough hand to de defeat two spades? And point wise, if we think we're going to beat two spades, and we think other people are going to be beating two spades, and if we think three diamonds works. We can see a clear way to a top with a double, assuming our partner would leave it in, which I don't think he would because he's a robot. And also, I don't think it's necessarily the right bid. Um, I'm not sure that I can look at this hand and think that somehow I can hold them to seven tricks. I don't. I just don't know where they're coming from. Maybe if the maybe we get a couple diamonds, we get a couple clubs, maybe a heart. I just don't see where I have a reliable enough to sit basis to conclude that I'm beating two spades. Maybe a better evaluator could see it. So I bid three diamonds. Right? Beating two spades would have been negative 100, but letting them make was 110, and I didn't want to do that. So I'm going to stop this right now, put it back up so that we can be in the other seat. So the hand comes down, and I have missing the queen, jack of diamonds. Um, I'm missing the ace, king of hearts. But I have three club tricks. I have the ace of spades. I have heart trick, maybe, if it grows up. And I need to bring home enough diamond tricks to make this work. Now, this is three diamonds seems like a place where a lot of people might be. But I'm also thinking that a lot of people wouldn't have bet it. And so I'm going to beat anybody... If I can go positive, I can beat anybody who, who stayed in spades, even if they set one, because that's only a negative 100, and uh, making three diamonds is going to give me 110. So we've got, uh, all together, we've got six, seven, and six, 13 points, 20 points, 21, 24 points all together. And if we remember the bidding, um, West made an overcall in spades and with some little support over there. So of the remaining 17 points, 16 points, you know, it would seem as though West probably has most of them. Which would include the Queen, Jack of Diamonds, the King, Queen of Spades, probably the King of Hearts. Let's 
see if he continues with the cane. He doesn't. So probably the, he was leading a small or even a small a bit of heart right. Now they bit spade. So yeah, probably um, he was just cashing out there in robot style. Let's see what we could do. Um, is there a, any sense in me leading a heart here to the ten? Setting up the queen jack. We'll see. Problem here is if they were splitting badly against me. Uh, they get a heart rough, but let's see. And then here comes the heart. And a diamond. A diamond comes out, which I can cover. Now, if the queen of diamonds is in west, we're home free, and that seems completely logical to me to try to finesse for the queen here. And they both follow, so I can drop the diamond. Um, do I have the rest of the tricks? If so, I did better this time than I did when I uh, played the tournament. Both can follow, and then when they do, spade is gone, and I uh, made plus one. So this will give me an actual top board, and it would have given me the top board in tournament because I made the plus one. But like I said, my goal actually was just to make nine tricks because I felt that 110 was going to be a good score. Making 130 is even better. As we can see in the tournament, uh, 130 gives you a 96. But just making, making that decision on whether to defend or play was the key to doing well. All right, so we'll move on, and we'll start with the outcome of this one as well. As you can see, I'm at the top of the list there, uh, one of five who made 420. But look what else went on, right? We had a guy in clubs going down one, getting a 64% setting, choosing to play them at three clubs, um, setting it. And then we had a bunch of people who did not make. So I'm viewing this one, and so what's the contract? As we look at this, what contract do we really want to be in? Well, we want to be in four hearts. Why? Because just about everybody else is in four hearts. And then we want an opportunity to make as many tricks as we can. This is the classic. There is no game bonus at match points because everybody who matters is um, in four hearts. And when I say everybody who matters, that's because this guy in three clubs, these two people who chose to defend three clubs, just don't matter to us. Their scores are unrelated to ours because there's only two of them. So four hearts is the right contract. And uh, let's go back to the board and see what it looks like. So this auction is weird, and I can see why some people got stuck in three clubs, I guess. Um, it opens one no trump, and of course we have four, six, five, eleven points a game going hand, and we transfer to hearts. Um, this guy bids three clubs, which is their way of super accepting. Um, West doubles, and West doubles because they actually have a club suit. Right? So this gives the, you know, whatever happened at those other tables, somehow the three clubs was first bid by West. So looks like maybe some bad auctions over there. People didn't know how to use a Jacoby transfer or something. But, um... We can see that the West has a club suit. This guy is super accepting with the three clubs and um, saying he has a doubleton club with 17 points. So do we think we have a slam now in hearts with a nine kite heart suit? And I'm just lacking, I don't have a single control. So I find it real hard to make a slam try and I'll just bid four hearts. So I end up playing the hand. Unfortunate, but no way to avoid it in that auction. Right, and we get, so we get the super dummy, which has uh, the, the promised 17 points, has the promised four card heart suit, has the promised two card club suit, right? And the only suit we're really weak in is spades, is spades. Now remember that double, this guy passed, this guy doubled. So um, with clubs, why didn't he bid those clubs over the one no trump, I wonder? Um, interesting. So we know we're in the right contract, and so we know that we need to take, and we know that people should be there, so we need to take as many tricks as we can. Um, if the ace of clubs is in west, where it should be, and if he has, this looks like the top of a doubleton, 
right? So that would be six clubs there, so six, three, two, two. Um, we're just going to have a chance here to get two club tricks. Now, this is critical here. Let's see if we do. No, rough. So the actual distribution was West had seven clubs. West had seven clubs. Now, if West is also holding the ace of spades, um, the, we're not going to get any club tricks. Well, yeah, sure, we can rough a club knot trick now. But uh, we're good still. The ace of spades turns to be a, out to be here. So this guy is the ace of spades. If we can find a place to pitch us, well, he leads the spade again, making it easy. Leads into our king jack. All right. But we have to make the rest of the tricks. So we're unable to capitalize on an extra trick here. All that seems available is the 10 we're going to get. All right. So we can pull trump here. And uh, we have ace, king, queen. We have the king of clubs. We have the king of spades. Uh, we have 10 trump. We have the top four. So we can pull trump without any problem and then just cash out. So we can claim the rest of the tricks. So classic example, right, of there is no such thing as... A game bonus, right? All that mattered was making the four hearts. Coming to board nine, um, we had another sort of chance. Uh, Robot actually makes the decision here, but when we get to two spades, we have an issue in our hand, south hand where I'll be sitting, on whether to rebid diamonds, and as you can see, a lot of people did, right? And most of them made for 42% because there's a huge score available in a doubled spade contract. So what happened, right? Well, let's look at why I doubled. So I start with seven, eight, nine, 14 points. I have six diamonds and four hearts. And we're playing match points, hearts pay more. So a four, four fit in hearts would be better than any kind of fit in diamonds. But we have to start with the diamonds. And my partner, after a spade overcall, hems and haws, tanks, and passes, east bids two spades. And this turns out to be the critical point in the auction. And the way I handled it was this. If I bid my diamonds again, um, we're missing the chance that we have four foreign hearts. But and I'd be at three diamonds, and if they have hearts, we might be in hearts at the three level, um, getting paid a lot more to make four, four to make a heart contract, to make three hearts, than we're going to get paid to make play three diamonds. Um, so if I double, he could say hearts. If I double and he says clubs, well, frankly, I'll just bid three diamonds. So I don't think I've lost anything. Don't think I've lost anything by doubling. Do I want them to just play two spades? It's a really good chance my partner has five spades or four spades. So, you know, maybe we're okay in spades as well. Defending spades probably are. And in fact, they are in the red. So maybe the double has yet another way to win. And Kit Woolsey talks about this in his uh, iconic book, Match Points, about having two horses to win, right? If you bet on one horse to win, then you win when that horse that horse comes through for you. But if you have other horses in the race, you still have other ways to win. Here, I have a few ways to win when I double that I don't have. If I just bid three diamonds, I, I win if diamonds is the right bid. But if I double and find four foreign hearts, I win. If I double and just back, get back three diamonds, nothing lost. If I double and my partner indeed has five spades, he may convert. So a double puts all sorts of uh, horses in the race. Hi, Taz. Um, all sorts of horses in the race. So I double and my partner converts. All right, he converts. And uh, we are in great shape. Now, when you, when you convert a double, it's nice to lead a trump because presumably you have as many as West and you're trying to gain control of that suit. Um, um, if they are going to be roughing in some other uh, suit, it's nice to knock them out. Here it really doesn't matter because they do have a 5-3 fit. My partner has five spades. 
right? So he goes to a diamond. Why would he do that? Well, I had it. I bit it. It's 6-3 now, and it's looking a lot like um, we can get diamond roughs or, alternatively, force west to rough. Let's get a count here. Yeah, turns out uh, west had three that, the, that my partner had a stiff diamond. So I cash all the diamonds. So, should I try another one? Why not? Do I have anything better? Not really. Um, West uses the two of diamonds here to throw away a club. Um, and they, my partner lets him rough in the dummy. Let's see what happens here. I should go up with King. Losing. Um, he can't really lead a club now. And uh, partner is in complete control of this. Of this spade suit. <laughs> All right. <coughs> rough there wins the king of hearts and we set them three for an 800 All right so the match points issue in this hand was you know if i rebid the diamonds the hand is probably over we get three diamonds or they go to three spades and we might beat three spades right so there i guess there is another horse in the race by bidding three diamonds it may be we buy the contract we make we make 110 and that turns out to be the best place so that's one horse in the race the other horse in the race i guess would be they go to three spades and we're able to beat them maybe double them then so another horse um but i felt like the double also gave us the chance of finding a four four heart fit so on this one let's start again with the outcomes All right the outcomes are pretty clear that you should be in four hearts right there are four tables that only got to three um they are not playing with us right it's the other um, 12 tables that are, are playing with us. The three heart people, right, if they're right and we're going down in four hearts, well, that's fine. They beat us. Um, if we're right, then we beat them. But there is just a uh, binary thing there. We either win with them or lose them. We're not worried about them at all, right? The people we want to play against are the people who form the bigger part of the field. Um, here, let's play with the hearts. Game bonus doesn't matter. Let's just make our contract. Um, we have a good hand. It's got, what, 8, 14, 15, 16 points. A couple of them are jacks. Um, I'm not going to open one no trump because I have this easy rebid of clubs. My partner, though, comes through with two spades. And this two spades is a limit raiser better, right? So we have our fit. Could he have, what, 14, 15 points where we might want to be thinking about slam because my ace of spades has uh, it's got so much value now that we have a fit, possibly. I don't really know how to get there, so I just kind of bid three clubs to see if it made him happy and made him do something different. I mean, bid diamonds or something. Uh, you could bid a diamond uh, control there. And uh, Anyways, I tried to see if I could tempt him into something more we get to four hearts as did everybody else and in fact slime was not there so no big deal uh we they start with a heart and we have five heart tricks the ace of spades for six and we have king jack queen nine eight of clubs so club tricks coming our way and we have a possible trick in the king of diamonds if west who did make the first over called holes ace of diamonds uh the Five card spade suit means that West has either six, five or six spades, which means East either has one or two. Um, something to be careful here. Um, and um, maybe a good reason to pull Trump right away. Now I'm going to pull two, all right? Two hard tricks. Leaves East a heart trick, probably, if West is long in spades. Then probably East had three hearts, but these are thin margins indeed. Um, Getting 
a spade trick is kind of tough, right? Because we know the king of spades is over here. So we'd have to play the queen of spades, pitch a loser, and have him win the king. But my worry is this. If this was a singleton 10, which seems like it could be very likely that high, then um, then this guy's going to rough. So that doesn't help me a whole lot. Although I do have the queen to get over there. Uh, unfortunately, the way I played the cards, I can't get over there that way now. I would have to pull trump, I would get, presumably get rid of one, lead to the king, have it win, so that I could play the queen of spades. But the problem is then I've got diamond losers in my hand. Those are the ones I'm trying to get rid of. Uh, whatever. Um, I'm going to lead up to the queen of clubs. There's an ace. That's probably about all he's got in points. Um, um, if he has the 10, that would be plus one. If I mean, that's a way to get an extra trick here is by playing the nine. Um, let's see, is there a downside to that? It seems good enough to me. Let's try the king of diamonds. We need that one. And we get it. So now um, we could try pitching a loser on this queen of spades, but as I thought would happen, east roughs. Uh, West had a good spade suit, right? And now we, what, we can, the trump are gone. Um, didn't break, the 10 was here, so there's a plus one if you took that little finesse. But instead I'll rough. And uh, that's about all, they're not gonna get any more. But I have the ace king of hearts, so I'm making 10. All right. So, would it have been nice to, did I, could we have gotten one more trick? Yeah, but it was on the club lead. Is that obvious that he would have the 10? Well, we know spades are long in the other suit, so maybe sticking the 9 in when they return the 2 was the right idea. That would get you the plus 1 and the 100%. But um, as we saw when we looked at the history, um, being four hearts here got you 75 percent notice that's all determined on how many of these fellas down here didn't make right because you get a point for beating each one of those we'd all been making and we'd only be beating these guys and we'd be only getting half a point for the rest of us and that 75 percent would be quite a bit lower all right so for fun um, just to to show you how crazy first playing with the robots can be and how crazy they can make you second to show just how i hate to say it but i think whimsical some match points turn out hands turn out to be um let's take a look at this final one um i have six 12 points right a nice i have a six card suit with nine eight with the ace queen um got a hole in the spade suit diamond though one card in their suit so pretty good i start with two clubs i have no problems over calling this even vulnerable and my partner has support now um and they have their heart fit um don't really know how many par partner has because either west or east could have extra hearts but it would but at he's at a minimum two hearts so i feel like we have at most two heart losers and i really want to compete and, and this was probably in error, right? But I feel like we have a nine card fit and I don't really want to leave it up to the robot to compete. And that's what it comes down to. I don't want to leave it up to him. What does double mean? 10 plus, five clubs, two plus hearts. Pretty bland. That might be a way to control it because this way if he bids four clubs, I can just pass. And that might have been what it, that might make some sense. But what I did was this. I bid four clubs and I didn't really look to see what it meant. And we can see that it shows 18 points now. Right? And I didn't look at that. So I realized after I hit this that I have led my partner astray. I remember looking at four clubs and thinking, what did I say? And I was like, oh my God, I told him I have this maximum hand. Do I? I have 12 points. We have an extra trump. Uh, I have a stiff in their suit. Um, we should be short in hearts, but oh my goodness, have we overbid, and my partner has launched into a key card bid, and if I answer him honestly, we will be in six clubs, or oh my goodness, higher, 
right? So five spades is the correct answer. So I thought, well, what if I just said five clubs, right? Because the five club response is zero or three, and maybe, just maybe, the robot will shut up and let me play five clubs, which I'm already feeling bad about. So I say it, but no, he doesn't take me for that. He takes me for three, um, six clubs. The opponents know, um, not from the look on my face, that, um, that, we're way, that, that something's wrong, and they double. Right, so this is a contract that has gone astray, and I'm entirely at fault. And then my partner lays down this. If you go back to the auction, here's something interesting. This double, right? You know, does it say? Does it say, "Hey, lead my suit"? I don't know. I don't know. But he starts with Queen of Hearts, which holds, and this bothers him. And he doesn't switch to diamonds, right? Because it's off two aces, right? And not only that, I have a place to pitch this diamond, right? On the spade over there. And we have all the club tricks. So now the contract is making, even though there's split. What, what we start with six, six, right? Six, six. Six, six. Yeah, we have this already just fit. So we have all the, uh, let me just make sure. Yeah, okay. So now all I have to do is go like this, set up that extra winner over here in this card suit, long suit. <laughs> bye bye, diamond. And I can cross her up the rest and claim. So I ask you, did I do anything right in this hand? I don't think so. And yet, we do well. We do great. These poor guys here who probably, probably may have done some of the same problems that I did to get six clubs, right? They, they, they lost the two hearts off the top. And I was fortunate enough not to with two other guys. A lot of other people just let them play in four, four hearts, having no idea that all this pyrotechnics was going on with the clubs. Um, just curious yeah everybody that got to six clubs bid clubs which was an overbid